you know, boy, we we are living in some bizarre times for cars. Uh, in, in general, it's bizarre, but for car culture, it is now just absolutely nuts. I I can't. It has gotten to the point where the absurd is now just expected, and and, and what I'm talking about is the, I believe the uh, great grand yeah great grandson, the great grandson of Walter P. Chrysler, wrote an open letter to Stellantis. This is where this is how bad it has gotten for Chrysler. This is how bad it is for Stellantis. It, this is unreal. And as as a fan of of Chrysler products, you know I'm very knowledgeable, especially on pre you know eighty five in the heyday you know heyday Chrysler products. And this what is going on now is sad. It really it's sad. And you know if, if they go away. If you have one of their old cars, you're not going to get stuff or any, you know, stuff for them or support. And this is why this matters. You know, this is current news, but man, if you're into these cars, this stuff matters big time. So let's get into this um, mess. A letter to the people saving Chrysler, a call to action, a call to investors and workers to rebuild the automaker. Frank Rhodes Jr. I am writing to you today not just as a concerned citizen, but as someone with a deep personal connection to one of our nation's most iconic brands. My great grandfather, Walter P. Chrysler, founded the Chrysler Corporation in 1925, a company that has since become a cornerstone of American automobile history as we approach the 100th anniversary of Chrysler with plans that could be the largest gathering of Chrysler products ever seen in North America at next year's Chrysler Carlisle event. I believe the time for change is now. I am ready to lead that change. This is, this is starting to get real. This is really serious. This is, I mean, seriously, that, that, that's a, that's a strong opening. For the past 45 years, I have proudly served as a brand ambassador for Chrysler. I've seen the highs and lows, the triumphs and challenges, but today I believe we are at a critical juncture. The Chrysler brand, once a symbol of innovation and American ingenuity, is now at risk of fading into obscurity due to what I believe are poor decisions and mismanagement by its owner, current owners, Stellantis. And there is Walter P. Chrysler, one of his first... Chrysler's the Chrysler Six. Yeah, it's it's and if you have to read up on the history of Walter P. Chrysler. This man was a genius. Because before he formed Chrysler Corporation, he went to Buick in 1912 and saved Buick from imploding. And then when he started Chrysler Corporation, he went and he followed General Motors division model. And that's why you had five. You had, you had four divisions under him, because he had uh, Ply, uh, Plymouth, Dodge, DeSoto, and Chrysler. That was the lines, and you went up the ladder. But I digress. So <clears throat> Stellantis, a company that seems out of touch with the American market, where did I hear that before? Has has allowed sales to decline, delayed new product launches, and put the livelihoods of our dealers and workers in jeopardy. Prices are soaring, layoffs are looming, and the future of the brand hangs in the balance. Meanwhile, Stellantis CEO Carlos the Butcher Tavares earned a staggering $39.5 million salary, a figure that seems grossly out of proportion given the struggles of facing the company. My great-grandfather was hired by General Motors GM in 1911 to save the failing Buick brand. Within a few years, he turned Buick into GM's most profitable division. But even back then, poor management decisions, like investing in impractical projects, threatening to derail his efforts. His This mirrors the situation today where Stellantis investments in ventures like Archer a Aviation, well, I'll even add to this, the electric appliances, which no one wants, 
seems to distract from the core business of building great cars. These funds would be better spent revitalizing the Chrysler brand. And there it is. Look at that. Chrysler 300. Oh, 61. That is such a sexy, sexy car. And Chrysler actually was one of the, the no side note. Chrysler actually made the transistorized radio. Um, they worked with Philco. And in 55, I believe, or 56, they came out with because before that, they weren't transistorized. They just had tubes. So this was, you know, they were the company of innovation. But once again, digress. The current um, the current management of Stellantis oversees more than 15 different brands, cannot give Chrysler the necessary attention. The result, mediocrity at best. And now with the potential entry of Chinese automaker BYD into the U.S. market, uh, industry faces an even greater threat. The influx of cheap cars would devastate our manufacturing base, and it would just, and not just a possibility, it's a fact. I was hopeful when uh, Christine Fuel was appointed the leader of Chrysler brand, but year after year, we see Chrysler's products being pushed further down the priority list, while slow-selling brands like Fiat, Alfa Romeo, and Maserati receive more attention. Um, I had to, uh, this is a little FYI. That's because those are brands that are important to Fiat, which is the main company of Stellantis. So that's why uh, Chrysler's, the North American market really is nothing but a, a, a springboard. But once again, that's just my thoughts. Chrysler is deep rooted in the American market, serving as a reliable and accessible option for the middle class. Does Stellantis understand this? Chrysler needs new products now, not tomorrow, not next year, now. Recently, United Auto Workers, UAW, President Sean Fain criticized Stellantis and Carlos Tavares for failing to honor contracts. I stand with our workers, but it's clear that the current approach is not working. Stellantis and GM are pricing themselves out of the market and layoffs seem in inevitable. This is a situation that cannot continue, but I am not without hope. I am confident that investors will see the potential in resurrecting this historic brand. My vision is to bring Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram back as an American-owned company that focuses not only on profits, but also the people who build these cars. And I, I propose creating a new Chrysler Corporation with workers as part owners of the company. This would give them a stake in the success of the company and ensure that their jobs are secure. Hey, I don't know if I'd be able to sell that one. <laughs> <clears throat> this plan would also allow Stellantis to save face by exploring all options while offloading Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram to a company that truly cares about their future. This is not just a business opportunity, but a chance to restore pride in American icon and secure the future of thousands of workers. The situation is dire, but with the right leadership and clear vision, I believe we can turn things around. The time for action is now, and I'm ready to step up and save the brand that my great-grandfather built. With the support of investors and the commitment of our workers, we can ensure that Chrysler name lives on for another 100 years. Sincerely, Frank B. Rhodes, Jr. Okay, so let's talk about this real quickly. Uh, this is a really great idea. I, I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. The union, I don't know if they really want to be owners because you have to also deal with the tough times, not just the successes when you own something. Eh. Maybe a sell, but a few points. Um, Stellantis will never get rid of Ram. They will never get rid of Jeep. Those are two brands that, honestly, they could sell worldwide. They sell Ram more efficiently in South America. Jeep, they can sell anywhere in the world because it's Jeep. And that's gonna, the, the, that is why they went, as Fiat, went and basically stole this company for nothing. $4 billion, I mean, for all the intellectual property. Uh, also, the, they never really repaid the uh, $1.8 billion in TARP that they owe the uh, U.S. taxpayer. But, you know, I digress on that. The, the other part of this is um, th with the auto union, Stellantis knew that they were going to do this. That's why in the contract next year, they can eliminate as many people as they can through retirement. and it's going to come, and I think that the UAW really tried to play hardball with the wrong people. This is a European company. This is not an American company. You can sit there and try to strong arm them, 
But at the end of the day, you're not going to strong arm this company. They're going to just fire you and move the manufacturing to Mexico because they already have some manufacturing there. That's where they make their, their Hemi V8s were made in Mexico. It, it's not a, it's not a stretch. You know, I, I, what I want him to see one, one, Mr. Rhodes succeed? Absolutely. I think it would be the best thing ever that could ever happen to this company. But the other problem is that, you know, the company has intellectual properties, but right now they have no product line. And they're wasting billions, billions on these electric appliances that no one wants. Uh, and there's another ar uh, article I'm going to do in another video. Hang around for that one. Literally sad at this point. That we've come to the point part where Chrysler and General Motors or Stellantis and General Motors are so in bed with government that they do their bidding no matter how bad it is for their business. And they're doing things that are destructive to the car business for themselves. And this is a great and this is how this is becoming crescendo at this point. That's what's so great about this. This is somebody with a large voice with some gravitas. I mean, he's around the brand and saying he's an insider. He's saying this stuff. This is this is really where it needs to come from. But you know, arrogant Tavares isn't going to do anything. He is he is as arrogant as they come. He wants to be the head of as many brands as humanly possible. If you read about him, that's really all he ever wanted. And I mean, stab Goshen in the back at Nice at um, Renault. So this is this is this is not an honorable man and i will say that i i i have no love for this guy he's a destroyer of brands he is a slasher and burner and uh hopefully mr rhodes can get the right people together maybe have the uh you know unfortunately you need to have some somebody in politics on your side too because it's so interwoven at this point you have to have that too it's just it, it's just sad it's come to this point. It really is. And, uh, you know, those are my thoughts on this um, <laughs> really interesting uh, break of events. You know, comment below. Let me know what you think about that. You know, and if, you know, you could always do the other things, you know, the like, subscribe, share, whatever. You know, but thanks a lot for uh, listening to this and uh, hope you learned something. And as always, you know, if you have a cool car or a classic, take it out because you'll make someone's day. Maybe even your own. I'll catch you on the road.